custom lightsaber hilt from Savvy's Workshop and a couple of blades. One of these lightsaber blades I've labeled stock, which I'm going to put off to the side for now. And another one I've labeled mod. I've modified it a little bit. I want to show you uh, what it does. This is what I'm going to be calling my roughed draft. Uh, this is going to be a quick, relatively speaking, and dirty display of what this mod does. So, lightsaber crystal is in. Turn it on. And even though the light is on, so the color isn't as bright, it's getting washed out a little bit here, you should be able to notice this is not a yellow, this is an orange. I'm not going to cut the camera here because I want to prove that with one lightsaber blade, all of these colors are uh, present. So, second blade, or second crystal, this is a white crystal. Again, I think you can see, even with the lights on here, this is a uh, pink or a light purple, but it looks to my eyes to be a pretty good pink color. Another reason I don't turn off the lights is because uh, the camera, when it tries to correct for the color, actually screws up. I think what you see in the camera here, in the video here, with the lights on is more accurate than if I took the light, or if I shut the light off. Third crystal, a blue, powered on. And again, I think what you're seeing in the camera is very similar to what I'm seeing here. This is more of a cyan or teal, maybe. Uh, it's it's definitely a little bit more blue than green, so it's a bluey green it or a greenish blue. I don't know what you want to call that. All right. So let's quickly talk about uh, what the heck I have done with this lightsaber blade. This is a picture of the PCB that is in the base of the lightsaber blade here. And you can see a bunch of pins here going off to the strip of LEDs that make up the blade. This is where all the, the logic happens. On the back side of this PCB is where the microcontroller that runs the whole show exists. Uh, that looks like this. It's just a big epoxy blob. It's not very exciting. Uh, what I want to focus on here are these three MOSFETs. You have these three pins here marked with R, G, and B for red, green, and blue. That's the electricity coming back from the LEDs, and they go through these MOSFETs to ground. These MOSFETs, they're like switches. When you turn one on, it allows electricity to flow through, let's say, the, green, the, the MOSFET that controls the green channel is turned on. When that's turned on, it allows electricity to flow through the green LEDs and the blade back through here, through the MOSFET to ground. If there's no path to ground, the electricity can't flow, the LEDs don't turn on. So these three MOSFETs, one for each color here, control what colors turn on and off. Uh, there's a control pin here that, for each of these MOSFETs that connects back to the microcontroller. The microcontroller determines which one of these or all three of these turn on or off to give you the different colors. So this little schematic here sort of shows off just that little bit. These are the MOSFETs. These little circles represents the uh, the pins that connect to the microcontroller to control the MOSFET. Uh, and you can see it's just the green line comes down through the MOSFET to ground. The blue line straight through the MOSFET to ground. Very simple. But this red channel has something odd about it. It's got this big giant uh, shot key diode. It's uh, a... Uh, rectifier diode it's intended to use uh it, it's intended to handle lots of current lots of electricity uh it's not using a lot of electricity here the reason they got a they, they need a beefy thing here is because they need a low uh forward voltage the thing about diodes whether it's one of these shot keys diodes or the leds light emitting diodes there's a there's a, a minimum amount of electricity that you need and a minimum amount of voltage that you need to turn that LED or that diode on so that electricity will flow through it. And what this diode here, I believe, is doing is it's, es it's essentially dropping the voltage down by a couple hundred millivolts. So the voltage across the LED is going to be 
the same voltage that these other LEDs are going to see, except it's going to lose a couple hundred millivolts because of that shot key diode. And because of that, less voltage means less power is going through those LEDs. It means they're going to be a little bit dimmer than they would be if that diode didn't exist and it was just a straight shot. So the point here is that because this diode exists, the red channel is just a little bit dimmer than it would be if this diode was removed and these two pads were just uh, connected with a piece of wire. Here's the modification that I did. And I'll, I'll show you the PCB itself in a minute, but I think it's cleaner to look at a schematic first. I removed that diode and shorted it with a piece of wire. So now the red channel looks like this. That makes the red LEDs a little bit brighter. So that mod on its own, yellow looks still a little bit yellowy, but it's an orangey tint of a yellow. Um, and white still looks mostly white, but you can sense that there's a little pink going on there as well. To further the effect, I wanted to reduce the amount of electricity going through the green channel. Well, I'm going to do what they did for the red channel initially. I'm just going to move that diode over to the green channel. So essentially, I took this diode, removed it, shorted that out with a piece of wire, and then re-soldered it over here, connecting it to the green channel. Now, in the stock setup, there's just a straight path, a straight copper trace on the PCB here that goes right down to the green MOSFET. I had to disconnect that. There are a couple of ways you can do that. You can either cut the trace. The, you have uh, the PCB here. You have the white solder mask over it. Underneath that white, that layer of white that you see here is the copper traces themselves. You can cut through the solder mask, through the copper trace, and make a physical, physically disconnect the green pin here from its corresponding MOSFET. Or you could, if you don't want to uh, modify or, or physically destroy or alter the PCB, you could remove the solder from that MOSFET, uh, that pin on that MOSFET right there, and lift that pin up a little bit so it can't connect to the pad beneath it, and then solder a wire to that pin. You're breaking the connection, but you're doing it here, and you're doing it in a way that's uh, again, doesn't physically alter the PCB. I didn't do that because it was late at night when I first came up with this mod and I wasn't thinking things through. Um, but that's okay. If I ever need to reverse the mod, I can just scrape away the solder mask and bridge that, that cut trace with a, a bit of solder. It's, it's not a big deal. Anyways, back to the mod. So now I have this, the, this uh, shot key diode taking a couple hundred millivolts off of the green channel. So now the green is a little bit dimmer, the red's a little bit brighter, now the blade looks orange. Now with a, with a yellow crystal the blade looks orange, with a white crystal the blade looks pink. That is all I did. You don't need any extra components except a little bit of wire. The great thing about that mod so far to get orange and pink is you're just repurposing this diode that's already there for you, ready to be repurposed. I like that. That's I like like that part of the mod. But there's one more thing that I realized, which is if I got a second shot key diode and connected it between green and blue, now we can do the cyan mod as well, all in one blade. Um, the diode allows electricity only to flow in one direction. It doesn't allow electricity to flow in the opposite direction. So what this means is when the blue channel turns on, the uh, electricity through the green channel also has a path through the blue MOSFET to ground. So when blue turns on, both the blue and green LEDs get power through this one MOSFET. If the green channel turns on, though, because electricity can only flow in one direction, the blue channel doesn't turn on. The blue channel will stay off. That's why you can still do orange, which requires green and red channels to turn on. Or um, if you have a green crystal, it'll just stay green. You don't lose. Uh, it doesn't become blue-green. That's the importance of that second diode. Instead of some people have just shorted the two pins here, these, the, the blue and green pins here. If you just short those two and you put a blue crystal in, you'll also get cyan. But then if you put a green crystal in, you also get cyan. This mod gives you a little bit 
more options, and that's why I kind of like it. Um, the reason I'm calling this my rough draft uh, mod is I think this can be done a little bit better, and I have some parts that I've ordered to see if I can figure out a better way to do this. Um, but that will be for a future video. Let's dig into the modified uh, saber here, I, uh, the blade. I will remove these screws, take the plastic off, and we'll take a quick look at the PCB to see the mod. I'll warn you in advance, it's not pretty. Again, this is a rough draft. This is just a proof of concept. Let's get really right in there. All right. So you can see that diode, right, has been removed and I've shorted it with just a piece of wire. Here is the new home for the diode. You can see it connects to that green pad and then it comes over here to this bit of wire that goes to the green MOSFET. The place where I cut the trace, you can't see it because it's underneath the diode here, but I cut the trace up here. Again, if you look at the white solder mask, you can sort of see these raised sections. You can see especially over here. You see these raised sections in the reflection of the light here? That's a trace. I had to use that the reflection from the light to uh, see the green trace, and then I just put my X-Acto blade right over it, and I pressed down. I didn't want to cut because the red, green, and blue traces are all right next to each other, and if you cut and you slip, you run the risk of damaging the green, uh, the blue and red traces. So I just put the X-Acto knife in there, and I push down. Be very careful if you try this. I probably should have lifted the pin over here instead. That would have been probably a safer, cleaner mod. But again, as I've said, this is a rough draft. This little orange bit here, this is Captain Tape. Uh, from earlier of the picture I showed you of the PCB, there's a blue a pad, a test pad here for the blue section, or it's right here. When I soldered to the green test pad section, I didn't want to risk shorting out the green and blue channels here. So I put a little piece of Captain Tape. Uh, electrical tape would work too. Uh, you don't even necessarily need to add tape. It, it, it could be that you just need to be very careful with how you're uh, soldering to make sure you don't accidentally short those two pins. Now, to add the cyan mod, here is another diode. I found this shot key diode. I have a, a bin where uh, if, I, if something electronical is being thrown away, I'll open it up and I'll grab the board, the electronics, uh, the, the PCB that's inside of it and throw it in the bin so I can salvage parts off of them when I need it. And I found a PCB for something. I have no idea what it is, but part of its power supply had a shot key diode. There are numbers on there. I looked it up online to confirm it's a shot key diode, so it's got that tiny forward voltage, so it's only going to be taking a couple hundred millivolts out of the... Uh, out of the green channel and it connects from the green channel here this piece of red wire over to the diode and the diode then goes directly to the blue pin here and that is the to give you the cyan mod and you can see i was lazy i left this piece of black plastic in as i was soldering and i scorched it a couple of times the wire that i'm using here is like i don't know is that 28 gauge single core or solid core wire it's it's it is what it is. It, it, it just, I made do with what I had. I made did with what I had. Whatever. Um, the nice thing though is you notice this wire standing up. There is vertical space here that, that you can utilize. So your wires don't have to be flat against the PCB. In fact, if I was redoing this, I would not lay this, this red wire flat. I would do what I did over here. Have it arch up a little bit that you have a bunch of room up in here to use. Um, you notice this diode is tilted away a little bit. That's to give a little bit of space around this post here so that when I put it in, there's room here for it. In fact, that red wire is possibly, the, the, the shielding on it might be just getting in the way a little bit there, whereas if I had done it vertically, uh, that would not have been a problem. Again, this is a rough draft of the mod. This is just quick, proof of concept, dirty sort of thing that I did late the other night. Um, so that's the mod. That's what it looks like. If you are electronically adventurous, this is something you can certainly try. Desoldering the uh, diode. All I did is I put a big blob of solder on either side. Let me, let me reposition the camera. Right, so here's the diode. 
I just put a big blob of solder on either side and then with my soldering iron I'd heat this side up then this side up and I'd keep going back and forth once the thermal once the thermals were were, were such that uh, the both sides stayed molten for just a split second I was able to come in here with tweezers hold on to it of going back and forth and eventually as I'm pulling up they both both sides came off uh, because they were both molten I was going back and forth fast enough that one side stayed molten as I heated up the other side pulled the diode off and that's there was no, there was nothing precise or surgical or clean about the method but it works uh much easier than uh, having to break out the hot iron uh the hot air station and try to heat up the whole thing and potentially blow away a couple of these uh, mosfets that's how i removed it and then the soldering is a little bit delicate that's why this does not look delicate because i do not have delicate hands in any sense of the word all right that should be enough that if you want to try it, good luck. Please, if you do try this, let me know how it worked out for you. Um, thoughts on how to make this a little bit better. There are, you can buy a single device or a single package that has two diodes in it, two shocky diodes. It would be something that looks similar to uh, these MOSFETs or these transistors where you've got one pin here, you got the package, and then you got a couple more pins coming out. And essentially you have uh, diodes. Oops, that's a terrible looking diode symbol. Like that. So you have a common, uh, in this case, a common anode going to two cathodes. You could do something like buy something like that and put it onto the green channel and run one pin to the blue channel and the other pin down to the uh, the green uh, MOSFET. You still have to remove the big diode over here. The problem with these tiny packages, this is called a SOT23 package. I'm getting into the technical stuff now for the, the few who care. You, If you don't, you can probably... You don't have to worry about watching any further right now. The problem with these packages is uh, the forward voltage, even even for Schottky diodes in this package, is going to be relatively high, like 500, 600 millivolts. It's, I'm not sure if it's worth it here. Also, these packages tend to be rated between like uh, around 200 to 300 milliamps. That's, that is barely enough. And you could probably get away with it. I'm not sure that I would. So what I've been looking at is, uh, what is that package format? Format Is it like a TO220? It's, it's like a big transistor looking thing. Got a little hole in it up here, right? And it's got three pins coming out of it. And it's got the same idea here where you've got internally, you've got one diode. Again, terrible diode diagram here, but... You've got uh, a common anode, and it goes out to the cathodes, so you've got three pins just like this. This is bigger. This is uh, finding space to get this to fit in here uh, is going to be an interesting exercise. These are rated for high, higher current and have a lower forward voltage. These things are what I think is going to be the correct solution. I have ordered some. I am waiting for them to show up. Alternatively, uh, there is another package you could buy individual shocky diodes they look about like oops like this and these uh have a package of sod i think it is 223 and uh you can find diodes shocky diodes with with a low like 200 300 millivolt forward voltage in this package which is equivalent to about it's almost the same package as an 0805 if you're familiar with trend, uh, like resistor or diode sizes. Um, this is similar in size to an 0805, much smaller than the, 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 the original diode that I used in here. You can probably find space very easily on the PCB to using that size of a diode to get all of this stuff working. Okay, deep breath. Brain dump complete. 
now I'm waiting for the uh, items to arrive and um, I don't think I'm going to touch my stock blade I think what I'm going to do is probably remove the mods that are in here and retry it with these and see see which of these works best um, Okay, and one more idea that I have in my head that I don't know how I'm going to pull it off, and to be honest, I don't think I will. But we'll see. Which is... Wouldn't it be nice if you had a switch so you could enable or disable this mod on the fly? That sounds to me, because you've got one diode here, one diode here, and you've got the... There's Remember, there's originally a, a diode here as well. Three different devices that you need to switch in or out of the circuit. So what is that? That is a... Is it a three-pull, single-throw, or double-throw, single, triple-pull? One switch that lets you connect three different uh, objects into the circuit. Those switches exist. Can I find one that's small enough? And if I do... Where the heck am I going to put it? I mean, there is only so much space here. I would almost certainly have to drill a hole somewhere. Do I put it inside of here? Do I try to put it in the flush with the body of this bigger plastic piece? Down, you know, maybe put it down here somewhere. So that way, you know, you flip the switch and then you plug the blade in and you've got stock colors or you've got your mod colors. That is so far into the future, like, this is the rough draft version of the mod. Version 1.0 will be when I figure out which of these three is the best solution. And then version 2 will be if I find a switch that is appropriate and fits somewhere in here. And also remember, it's not just about finding the switch, it's about finding a switch that's got the right uh, current rating for it. We're running probably 100 to 200 milliamps for each channel here. Um, it probably goes a little higher. Uh, probably 300 milliamps when you've got a single channel on. So there's a lot of considerations here that have to be made. So, But I wanted to get this out. I wanted everybody to have a chance to try it out for themselves rather than have to wait weeks for me to figure out what what solution makes me happy here you now have the opportunity to find your own happiness <laughs> with this mod so again if you try this please let me know how it works out for you i would love to hear about that good luck